Every week we find an issue and we see if we can uh, do something towards trying to solve it. Well, it's that time of the year, isn't it? And uh, you'd have to say a blind man can actually see that uh, in New Zealand we can't sustain 50 plus tracks. I mean, uh, that's a no brainer. We know that the industry is talking rationalisation. But, you know, in a country where, say, in the Waikato by way of example, we have 50 to 60 inches of rainfall a year, we just can't do without those grass tracks until we have an all weather track. So uh, we thought we'd get some industry opinion on that. Look, I think. A poly track seems to be the best type of synthetic track that I've seen uh, when you compare it with the Tapita and, uh, and also the Pro Rides that are also in. Um, the poly track seems to be getting rave rev reviews from a number of the, the trainers, whether they be the Caulfield uh, training track, the poly track used there, the, the new Pakenham Racing.com Park poly track, which is certainly getting um, wonderful use right through the winter. And I think, you know, given New Zealand's got such heavy rainfall uh, right through winter and spring, uh, a poly track would be perfect. It would take an awful lot of industry coordination. Um, you know, you're probably looking at the best part of 10 to 12 million to do it properly and to properly have a, a racing surface that you can use. So there has been some talk about just putting in a poly track to start with on a training base. But personally, I think you'd, you'd go down the the whole hog of making sure you got the, the racing surface up and running um, and I think it would be a huge asset to the New Zealand industry. Obviously we have a, a number of cancellations, um, right, you know, abandonments due to inclement weather. Also it's, um, it's more visually uh, appealing to look at so uh, we have you know, a number of bottomless tracks right throughout the winter which aren't great for neither the participants or the punter and, uh, and certainly when we're exporting our races abroad uh, it's, it's not a great look so I think a, a poly track would be a massive um, upside for New Zealand. At Pakenham they're looking at running 40 race meetings on it this year alone so, so that's, that's huge. Um, obviously if, if you've gone to all that effort of, of paying 10 to 12 million dollars to put one down then you're going to want to use it and use it regularly um, and that might mean trialling on it, racing on it, um, hopefully you'd put it in in and around a horse population so you could potentially even train on it. Um, yeah, I, th I think you'd, you'd certainly want to be using it probably for around 20% of the races run in New Zealand. We hear a lot of chatter about, oh we'll just put it inside an established turf track. For me, that just creates uh, tight track racing. And even if you're putting in another inside turf grass, that would be tight track racing, unappealing for the punter, unappealing for the participant. Look, we know at the end of the day how much all these abandonments cost the industry. And of course, at the end of the day, the bill payer, the owner. Is it a no-brainer? Yes. Yes, we need a track. Uh, we need a track where you can go and invest with some confidence. Look, it's a guessing game through the middle of winter, track to track what's wetter, what's uh, not, what horse is going to handle it. You get a track on. I know some people say oh, they're not sure about the pull of tracks, but those horses that go around there will build up a base of form on that particular track surface and you'll be able to invest with confidence. Cost is a concern. Some good economic minds on that government of ours, if they yes. invest, they'll get return because Correct. people will play on a poly track and I think it's also twofold quickly we can use some of our tracks that don't get so rain affected a little bit better the historic nature of dates have to be looked at and maybe we just use our